All right, all right, all right. This is the LOD Fire Bell Monk. For season 27, it's only going to work in season 27 because of the sanctified item. So you get angelic crucibles, these things here, and you can sanctify an item and you get one of three abilities. The one that we're looking for is... Casting Wave of Light now summons a bell at the target location that deals damage. When any player attacks the bell, up to five bells can be active at one time. So we've got Wave of Light, casting bells, and then you attack the bells, and they just do shitloads of fire damage to enemies around. So I'm going to go through everything, then we're going to do a bit of a demo, and um, hopefully you all have some time left in this season to enjoy, because... I think we're getting one more season and then D4 comes out and then we're transitioning over to D4. But anyway, so what you want, we'll start with the gear here. And because it's an LOD build, Legacy of Dreams, you want to rank up your Legacy of Dreams gem to 99 max first before you do anything and just save your ancient gear, put it aside. All right, so the way that it works is let's go through LOD first. While you have no set bonuses equipped, every legendary item you have equipped increases your damage by 375% and reduces damage taken by 2%. The bonus is doubled for ancient items, which does include primals, in case you're wondering. So you want to make sure, at the very least, they're all ancient. You can see mine here. They're at least ancient and some primals in there as well. What we're going to be using is the Togrin's Gaze, which Wave of Light is now cast right at the enemy. And it also increases Wave of Light damage by 133%. We're using Lefebvre's Seleque Shoulders, which reduces damage taken every time we Cyclone Strike. And we're going to be Cyclone Striking a lot. For Amulet, we've got Squirt's Amulet here. For the chest, we're using Syndicate, reduces the resource cost of fire skills by 23%. Pinto's Pride for the Braces also goes hand in hand with Wave of Light, slowing enemies by 80% for 3 seconds and dealing increased damage. I'm using the Witching Hour, Great Belt for damage increasing. St. Andrew's Gage I'm using. Um, basically, this helps you keep up your Squirts amulet and also gives a bit, of, bit more damage reduction and survivability. First time you attack an Elite Pack, you get an Absorb Shield equal to 133% of your maximum life for 10 seconds. So you're absorbing damage, you're keeping your Squirts stacks up, and you're staying alive. Staying alive. Now, the rings... You want to use Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac, Unity, just make sure you have Unity equipped on your follower as well to be able to actually get the damage reduction. But the per you're also using Convention of Elements, which I have in Cube. I'll show you right here. There's Kenai's Cube, Convention of Elements. Ideally, you want an Ancient Convention of Elements with as close to 200% increased elemental damage as possible and with really good stats such as crit chance, crit damage, and dexterity or cooldown. Even better, cooldown, crit chance, crit damage. If you don't have the perfect stats, you can definitely cube it. That way at least you get the guaranteed 200% increased elemental damage, which is what I'm using now. Um, instead of having Convention of Elements equipped, which would be ideal because it usually has better stats, I don't have an Ancient one with ideal stats, and I've got a Primal Ancient obsidian ring of the zodiac ideally you want to have zodiac um cubed convention of elements equipped but until you get the better one until you get a good enough convention of elements at least have like an two ancient rings equipped every ancient doubles the effect of lod so it's just a, a massive buff that you don't want to um, pass up on we're using black thorns here yeah it gives us that 20 percent fire damage elemental buff so or stat rather so you definitely want to have blackthorns equipped and you can have one set item equipped you just kind of have a set item bonus to make this build work crudus boots of course we're using here for boots the weapons we're using rabbit strike and kiyoshiro's blade now you can sanctify any item that you want i've sanctified my rabbit strike as long as you just make sure that whatever you sanctify using angelic crucibles make sure that you get the ability to cast wave of light and summon the bells at the target location. That's the main thing you want to focus on. And of course, legendary gems that we're using, the LOD, like I said, get that to 99, leveled up max, because the damage does increase as you level it up, getting up to a maximum of 375. Enforcer and Bane of 
the trap. You can mix and match legendary, ge legendary gems if you want. Experiment. Go to town. The regular gems we're using, we're using all diamond gems. Diamond gems for helm, for the cooldown effect. Diamond gems in the chest. Diamond gems in the chest. And diamond gems in the pants for resistance. That's pretty much gear covered. Of course, you want to focus on... Now, the main thing you want to focus on is making sure you get cooldown wherever possible. I've got... Where is it? 66% cooldown. You want to have like a minimum of like 62 to 64 for this to work. The more cooldown, the better. So make sure you got cooldown wherever you get cooldown wherever you can. Then go crit chance, crit damage um, as per usual. Resource cost reduction will be nice as well. So cooldown, crit chance, crit damage, resource cost reduction in that order. I would definitely recommend as far as stats go. In Can I's Cube. We'll scroll down here because if I run to it, my big head's in the way here. See if I open it here. But I am going through it now. So I'll go, I'll have it open. I'll go like this so you can see. And I'll also go through it here. So Incense Torch of the Grand Temple reduces the spirit cost of Wave of Light and also increases its damage. So definitely want that cubed. Armor, Bindings of Lesser Gods. Feel free to mix and match these two. Always equip whatever has better stats and cube the one that doesn't have such good stats. And already explained the rings and how that works with Convention of Elements. You can see that Convention of Elements is definitely in my cube there. I'm trying to move the chair. Yeah. It's definitely in my cube. The skills that we're using. Cyclone Strike with Implosion, Wave of Light with Explosive Light, Epiphany with Desert Shroud, Mystic Ally with Air Ally to regenerate Spirit, super important. Now, Dashing Strike is optional. I go with Way of the Falling Star when I'm spe doing speed runs. Um, you can change this to Blinding Speed if you need some more damage reduction if you're pushing. And also when you're pushing, like you just remembered, instead of St. Andrews, you can use the other gloves, Stone Gauntlets here which will um, give you a lot more armor. So getting hit increases your armor by 50%, but reduces your movement speed by 15 and attack speed by 20. The effect stacks up to five times. If you let it stack up to five times, you'll be immobilized. You won't be able to move. <sighs> so the only way to get around this is make sure Epiphany is active. That, that gains you immunity to all immobilizing effects. Or you can have the, um, the frost gloves, the frost uh, boots rather, equipped which i don't there we go ice climbers that, that's the ones i was thinking of you can have them equipped but doesn't you want crudest boots in this case that it won't really work here and you don't need them because you can definitely keep up epiphany especially if you have 60 plus percent cool down now where was i so dashing strike optional we're going to go with way of the falling star because we're speed running and serenity with ascension passives again optional depending on your play style and whether you're speed running or doing gr pushing i'm using seize the initiative beacon of yitta you'll be using this no matter what 20 percent cooldown harmony and near-death experience because it is quite squishy if you get caught in the wrong place you can take a lot of damage and you want that cheat death there speaking of cheat death our enchantress also gives us an extra cheat death and speaking of the Enchantress, what you want to have equipped on her is very important too. So you want to make sure that you get 25,000 intelligence. I'm just short here, but at 25, because I made some changes, but I can just put my Tormentor in and that'll give me my 25k just for argument's sake. I'll put it in there, but I can get away with not having it equipped. Where is it? It might be on a different... Um, There it is. The Tormentor. So for argument's sake, we're up to... Oh no, it's still not 25k. Well, I'd have to mess around with it and get up to 25k, but you get the idea. Up to 25k, you'll get 10% cooldown reduction on your Enchantress. So it's very important. But, but just to explain what I'm using here, I'm using the focus here which gains access to all skills but in order to use this you make sure that you have esoteric alteration and mutilation guard equipped with legend the legendary gems on your follower to make sure that she's alive so it's like follower cannot die but she gains access to all of her skills here i'm using kane's insight kane's pants and kane's boots for when i do nephilim runs if i'm farming for keys 
uh, it doubles the drop, the 25% chance to get double keys. I'm using the Born set here for some extra XP. Um, Nemesis Brace is super important to get that extra elite every time you touch a pylon. Flavor of Time, super important, doubles the effect of pylons. Oculus Ring for damage increase when you're in the Oki Circle. And of course, Unity, make sure that you have one on your follower and one also on your monk that way you get that 50 percent damage reduction i'm using born's weapon there so i can go and augment some items and get up to 25k intelligence if i wanted to but if you look at all the skills here my cooldown is 9.8 it'll go up 0.19 percent if i actually got up to 25k so i'm just dealing with it it's fine but um, you can definitely get up to 25k yourself to maximize it to 10%. I'm only, I'm only losing 0.19%. I can live with that because my cooldown is great everywhere else. Alright, I think that explains things as best as possible. Now it's time to go in there and give you all an example. So I speed farm 130s personally. Um, I'll usually get it done in 2-3 to three minutes unless it's a really shitty map. So let's have a quick look and see what we're going to get here. See, so, uh, let's just do it to serve as an example. But if you got the woods or Brythorn Cemetery, Fields of Misery, something like that, you definitely get this bad boy done in like two to three minutes. But find the level that's right for you. I like 130s, nice round number. You can do like 125s, 120s, like whatever, whatever suits you. It depends what Paragon you're at as well. At 4k, I think 130 is pretty good. But yeah, just be very careful. It is quite squishy regardless. Even at lower GR difficulties, you've got to make sure you time your um, Serenity right. Let's move on forward here. And you got to watch out for the shock towers on this level. Out of all levels, I've elected to go with this shock tower level. I wanted to get a really good map to serve as a good example, but it's alright. We play the hand that we're dealt. Hopefully the next floor is a good map. It better not be um, Corvus or Depths. I'll be pretty pissed, but anyway. This is definitely the ultimate way to farm Paragon solo. Very, very effective way to farm Paragon solo. And it's the best GR pushing build as well. So... You hit two birds with one stone, basically, with the LOD monk. And then if you set up an Inner's monk, then you've got also the best speed farming build as well in the game. So if you're solo, you'd be silly not to at least give the monk a shot this season while there's time left. Is there a pylon there? I don't think so. Let's keep on moving. We've got the caves. Don't forget those juicy purple orbs. Keep on going. And, um... If, if you're wondering, you won't be able to play this Firebell Monk after this season ends. That'll be it. This is your one and only chance. Because when the season ends, the theme is over and you won't be able to sanctify items. So you won't actually get that Firebell ability. It'll be gone. It's here for a limited time. So give it a shot now if you want to give it a shot. It's never too late. And yes, you can teleport over into the bells. You can cast them from far away and teleport straight into them like I am. Moving on, moving on, moving on. And you can just experiment with your play style. There are different ways to do it. You can definitely cyclone strike enemies straight into you if you want, but that way you're risking taking a lot more damage. Cyclone strike them in, cast your bells, and then just cyclone strike again to uh, explode the bells. I like to do them from a distance and then just teleport in. 
and then cast Epiphany once I'm in. Rift Garden is here. Unfortunately, no juicy pollen to finish off the Rift Guardian with. But he goes down easy enough. Super, super powerful build. Great for solo farming. Floor 4, didn't get good maps. But you could definitely do this in 2-3 to three minutes if you find the right GR level for you. That's a 130, so even 3-4 to four minutes is a lot of juicy XP. Happy Demon Slaying, folks. Let me know how you're going in this season. See you all in D4.